For those of you that are new to the portfolio stream, essentially what we are going to be doing today is we are going to be judging portfolios that you guys sent in based on three main factors. The first one is hireability, pretty much whether or not a recruiter or developer looking at your portfolio site would get more information about you and make them more likely to hire you based on it. Aesthetic, is it responsive? Is it easy to use? Is the UX nice and does it flow well? Or is it overwhelming and burdened with a bunch of animations and stuff like that? And finally, creativity. Can you execute on the other two things while also making yours unique and creative. And all these things will be scored out of 10 for a total score of 30. What is going on? I haven't clicked anything. The site's just taking me on its own journey here. Like, are you a developer or a business analyst or a data scientist? These are a lot of roles, bro. Also, I would not link your Steam. I would, if you are a developer trying to get a job, I would not link your Steam, bro. I would not link your Steam account in your portfolio site. What are these comments, bro? Do not link your Steam in your portfolio websites. Do not let recruiters see the degeneracy that happens on Steam, please. Anti-human race. Narc, why ban me? You don't want professionals seeing this stuff. 10,000 hours to regular Counter-Strike. How are you still playing regular CS? This is like 1.6, right? This is like CS Anthology or whatever. I mean, the man is full-time Counter-Strike, but he's a business analyst and a data scientist and a software engineer and a music lover. How can he be all four of these things, but also be a Counter-Strike pro? 9,000 hours. He has a chess.com thing, bro. If your rating's not at least like, oh, your rating's high. Oh, you're 2,000. Okay, highlight this. I don't want to see that you have 9,000 hours on Counter-Strike. I want to see the fact that you're literally rated 2,000. You have a 2,000 rating on chess.com. That's insane. You're a musician, a data analyst, a business ad a data scientist, a business analyst, a software developer, and you have 9,600 hours on CSGO with your lat on regular CS with your last game played like two weeks ago. Okay, th this is probably where things are lacking a bit. I go to your GitHub, the last thing you've updated was the portfolio app, and that was two weeks ago. We have a lot of hours on CS, we're playing a lot of chess, we're posting a lot of music videos, we call ourselves a data scientist, a software engineer, and a business analyst. But what's going on with the GitHub, bro? Where are those commits at? What's this commit history looking like, bro? Imagine if this commit history was your Counter-Strike history. Why the game isn't? Look, I have more hours on like a lot of games than he does on Counter-Strike. Believe me, I have 10,000 hours in probably six different games. But I'm not going to advertise that, you know, to the people that are potentially hiring me. I'm not going to give them my Steam name. You know how degenerate Steam names get? Those Steam comments, you know, when people leave comments on your Steam profile and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I think you have some impressive stuff. You do a lot of music, you do a lot of chess. But stick to maybe just being a software engineer and a chess hobbyist, maybe for the sake of like your thing. Higher ability, man. I don't know. Maybe a two. Aesthetic, like a two. Creativity, like a four. You have potential. You just need to work on it. Bro worked at bro worked at PayPal. Did I miss that? Please get me out of this animation so I can look at the actual thing. Do you actually work at PayPal? Bro, you've worked at good places. This needs to be highlighted up here somewhere, bro. Not like your Steam profile. Yeah, clear issue with like some priority here. Ooh, I like this a lot. It's like very simple. It's very clean. Oh yeah, that's cool. The way that this is like really satisfying, really easy to see. He's got all the links here. I crap, okay. This, not a big fan of. I don't like, I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm like scrolling. And as I scroll, it like uh, highlights more words. It's like, if I was trying to get to the good stuff, I feel like I'm stuck scrolling here. I don't like animation. I like animations when they don't actually impact the actual, you know, usability of it. So for example, these orbits are really cool because like I can see what's actually going on here without like, you know, without the animation getting in the way of seeing what needs to happen here. However, this thing, I want to like scroll down like, okay, there's some like chat GPT type of text where you like do cool stuff. I want to get to your actual experience and I want to get to the other stuff you have, but I'm stuck here scrolling for it. He made a Duolingo clone. That's interesting. Uh, Okay, minus points for not making these clickable in any way. Clicking on this should already take you to the source, in my opinion. But I do like the style of this quite a bit. Okay, we have a cool little animation here when you submit. These are from Magic UI. I got to check that out. Oh my goodness. I've been coding all this stuff from scratch. All these cool little animations and stuff. I've been doing all this from scratch. There's a library for this? I gotta remember that. Yeah, we're gonna give this a nine. For aesthetic, I really like it as well. I'm giving this a nine. Uh, and creativity, we'll give it an eight. Have I looked at this guy's portfolio before? Now I'm like doubting myself because it this feels so familiar. It feels like I've like looked at this somewhere. I like that you have an email. 
I don't think anyone actually fills in these forms. I'd much rather have like um, some social links. This is cool, but like, let's say I scroll down and I, I'm like, oh, where are you? Oh, it's just a, a globe. Do I have to sit here and wait another like 25 seconds to see where you are? It's the same Magic UI framework. Okay, so this is some framework from Magic UI. Now that I know that a lot of this is just sort of built off of frameworks and stuff like that, not to entice, connect with me so we have more social links and stuff like that. It's still a nice site, like don't get me wrong. It is nice. And like, I look at this and I'm like, okay, this is like pretty nice. If you can make a site like this for yourself and I was hiring you, I would like, you know, be okay thinking that you can make like a site like this uh, for me as well. So I'm gonna give hireability like a six and then creativity a four just because it's templated. I wish there was a section where you had something like this on what you were a specialist in and then all the stuff you've had experience with. You have React, you have Next.js, you have TypeScript, JavaScript, and then you also have Python. Are you better at backend stuff with Python and like Flask or something? Or do you use Node and Express for backend? So first thing we see here is just a big photo of you. Um, what do we got? Okay, I did not like that. Oh my goodness, this is so laggy. I don't know if you guys can see it, but my mouse is like lagging. There's like an active delay when I move my mouse. I'm a full stack web 3 developer. Oh man, it like hurts to scroll. Ah! <laughs> oh, don't make me do this, please. There is such thing as overcomplicating a portfolio site. When your portfolio site has animations that make someone's computer lag, they can hardly move their mouse and they have to scroll an infinite amount to get past the big word project. That's how you know you've probably over-engineered your por portfolio site. I have no idea what is going on. The site just restarted. Oh, I somehow clicked something that took me to a regular site. I don't know what I just clicked. Ah! I don't know what I just clicked that took me to the regular site. This feels so much better. I would get it if you were like an, a Unity editor or something or like a Unity developer or game developer, but you're a full stack developer and you do Web3 stuff. There's no reason for like all that animation and stuff. Like maybe if I was a non-technical person or like some guy like doing contract work, I'd be like, oh, wow, this guy can make fancy animations that like lags my computers. He's like a hire. But as an, uh, another engineer looking at this or like even a recruiter that has like a shitty little Chromebook, Running it along, like, nah, hell nah, dude. Nobody's gonna like sit here and read a bunch of text. The screenshots look cool. Like, I, I like the layout in the screenshot and stuff like that, but I still have like no idea what you do other than like these fancy animations. Like, can I go somewhere else? Where do I go? About. Oh my God, I hover over the stuff in the menu. This, oh, Jesus, there's so much going on. This is cool. I like this. This is nice. This is like a cool little feature. I can like move these little balls around and stuff like that. By the way, I, I know you're all wondering why my desktop is Shrek. I uh, I promise there's a good reason for that. It <laughs> oh, dude, look, I unminimized it and now all the skills are just gone. This is not an enjoyable experience as, as, a, <laughs> as a user of this site. It's laggy. I have no idea what you do. It's like crazy to try and navigate through this. This is just like way... I don't even want to say over-engineered. It's just way overdone. Maybe a three. Like, I could see it impressing somebody. Aesthetic. It's like aesthetic, but it's just so unusable. Like, it looks good. It has a ton of potential. Amazing idea, but just really poor execution. I'm going to give it a two for aesthetic. The vision was there. I saw the vision. It just lacked execution, you know? And you clearly have the skills, my friend. You clearly have the skills to execute on it, but you don't have the eye for, like, a UX design, right? Imagine if you're just, like, you have, like, 500 resumes being sent to you. You're going on this guy's website just to check them out before you do something. And then you get to that, and you're like, what is going on? Well in art dot dev. What do we got here, my friend? Whoa. Okay, this is unique. This is crazy. I'm not a fan of the big like wall of text right at the beginning. Ah, oh, this is sick. Oh man, I love this. Oh, he has the code for all of this publicly, and he just updated three days ago, my boy. Let me go. Let me go bad, and then I'll talk about the good. The only bad things, it's a bit hard to like read things. There's some visual, there's some paddings that need to be like taken care of to make this a bit more readable. Maybe choice of font, maybe like spacing needs to be worked on a tiny bit. I get you're going for the old school aesthetic, but it could, I think like be a bit more like easy on the eyes. The like whole console style is cool. It's not immediately interesting. I wish there was like an easy way to know exactly what you did. Oh, these quotes change. That is pretty cool. Oh, you click the button and the quotes change. Yeah, those are the bad parts. It's just a bit hard unless I like really hunker down and read everything and go through it. If I if I really take the time to go through this, it's amazing. Um, if I was looking at this just from first glance, it has like a nice hit of novelty. Um, and then after that, it's a bit hard to like go through and 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 
take a bit long to like understand exactly what you specialize in. I'd like to know like exactly what your specialty is up front. And then if I wanted to dive in, I can like see all this stuff. But this is extremely cool. I'm gonna go ahead and say higher ability. This really impresses me. Um, deeply impressed. I'm giving this a nine. Aesthetic, I think there is a bit that's lacking, although like the whole idea of it is amazing. And creativity, I'm giving this a 10. Never seen anyone do something like this before. Whoa. Whoa. Is that supposed to happen? Oh, uh, no. Where do people keep getting this? <laughs> Where do people keep getting this like I'm a like the, the like SAS. The SaaS style thing where it's like, I'm a blank, blank, blank. Front end developer. Do I have to wait to see the next thing now? Is there a next thing? Yeah, we gotta wait. Back end developer. This just took me to a whole new site when I clicked that. What the hell? I did not expect that. Okay, this animation is kind of annoying, not gonna lie. After like the first time. This is way too much text. I don't think anyone's reading this. I don't think anyone needs to know your birthday. 72,000 lines of code. Is that based on your GitHub or something? Layout's kind of weird, but... Other than all this text, like this is kind of nice. It's at least kind of streamlined. Um, and I did learn a bit about you. I'm going to put a six for higher ability. Aesthetic, I'm also going to give it a six. And uh, creativity is six. What we got next? Okay. Data. No. <laughs> more typing. More of these typing things. I do. I'm a business analyst. Data visualize it. Like, what is your job title? Like, are you a data scientist? Are you a machine learning engineer? Are you a file stack engineer? Are you, you like a backend engineer? You do database stuff? No, I guarantee you no one's going to sit here on the whole page to like sit here for like five minutes and scroll through all these to like actually know what you do. I've honed a versatile skill set in coupling. I just want to know like what kind of developer are you? Are you a data scientist? Remove about, remove hi there, I'm your name because you already have it up here. I'm a data analyst. My technologies are blank, blank, blank. Here are the skills on the like all of this can be condensed into like one little section. Um, swap these out with some icons. You know what I mean? Recruiters see this on almost like every single resume. But how are they supposed to know? Like how how, how does everyone that works a job? I've never worked at a job, and I think recruiters know this, where like, you know, you push a feature up and your boss comes to you and you're like, by the way, you've enhanced our 3D quality by 20% with that push. It kind of feels like just copying the status quo of what everyone's doing with their resume and everyone's doing with their with, with their stuff. And it makes it seem like really boilerplatey and like jargony and really templated. Um, and it makes it hard to get like real information. I'm gonna give it like a five, it's standard, and then creativity, maybe like a four. It's really basic and it's sort of like just a resume. Okay, we have the same like hello thing, I like that. We have an Among Us guy following our mouse. See, this feels like simple and cool and like I like it. It doesn't like take away from my experience of like using the site. It just adds to it. Okay, you're a product manager. What else? You're a product manager, a game developer, a full stack developer, a UI UX designer. Okay, so those four things. I had to sit here for like 20 seconds to like do that. See how even though this is like the biggest thing, nobody reads that because like we have like people have developed, especially recruiters, we have developed banner blindness to technical jargon that says nothing. Building apps that inspire people. What does that mean? This is the most, this is the biggest piece of text and it's the most notable thing as soon as you get to the page other than your photo, which is an amazing photo. It's like looking to the right and everything like that. Great UI. But this type of jargon, like you, you look at it and it doesn't, it doesn't actually like convey any real like factual information to somebody to like get the, to like know anything more about you. I would so much more prefer if you took like the one of the four roles that you're proficient with and like had that there as well. So I could just like understand what you're doing. I like saw like, in, I saw the word inspire and I didn't even bother reading it because I, I knew it's just going to be like, oh yeah, I'm inspiring with a versatile skill set. And I don't know what you actually do because you say you do everything. Like you say you're a UX designer, a product manager, a game developer, and a, like a, a full stack developer. Those are four very different lines of work and you could like like people will go to school for any one of those four things so it's kind of weird to say you're all four of them um the style though i absolutely love the style and aesthetic here beautiful style beautiful aesthetic bit of an issue with the scroll thing by the time i like get to the point where i want to read this part the image is a bit too high and the stuff is a bit too high um, but I like the idea here. I want to know what technologies you're using here. Oh, dude, you were a software engineering intern at Google. Like, this is like impressive stuff, right? I don't like that it took me this long and this far before I realized you were a previous software engineering intern at Google. Because that's a big deal. That's like something I saw that like, oh, okay, this guy's legit. It doesn't even get highlighted until like, if I'm looking at the center of my screen, I'm looking right here. 
and like it doesn't get highlighted until up here. This is cool. Oh, we get the Among Us guy back in. I love that. Oh, and he goes behind it with like a little blur. This is so well done. See, there's just too much stuff here, bro. I, the style of this is amazing. I just need to know what you do. I, it definitely increased the odds of me hiring you. It would go from a seven to like a nine if it was a bit more clear what you did. Aesthetic, I gotta give this a 10. Absolutely beautiful. And creativity, a 10. This was amazing. I love this. Like, I wanna stay on the site just to keep messing around with the Among Us guy. I'm a developer from India. Nice. No, where's it going? Okay, you're a developer, a blogger. I like the site. The aesthetic's very nice. I feel like these, this doesn't have to be that big. I prefer it if you just like had the logos and the names and you fit like all, how much is it? Okay, there's a lot. Maybe all nine of these in like a nine by nine grid or a three by three grid or something. Um, auto typing, this is way too much auto typing, bro. <laughs> way too much auto typing. Oh, it takes you to a whole page. Okay, that was not clear that it was going to take me to an actual page. I thought this was going to take me off the site. I like this. You have screenshots. That's actually quite nice. Oh, you imported the dot readme from GitHub. I think I would have left this out. I think I would leave this out. This is like just nobody's ever going to read this because it's just like a giant wall of text. And also it like looks out of place. I think if you just had this and then you had a button that's like back to my projects or whatever um, would have been good. Yeah, this is quite nice, though. I like had a good idea of what you did. It was very easy. Aesthetic, also an eight. Creativity, probably like a nine. Just need to, you know, clean up a couple things and like simplify things a bit here. Now, chat, 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 chat. Even though we have done all the portfolios, we have a very important task to do. We have to vote on our favorite of the day. So first up, we have Arjun's. Arthur's, which is the one that sort of remade like a Linux terminal type of thing where you can click through some of these. Sahil's which was very nice, very standard, nice. Oh, this was supposed to be there too. This one was supposed to be there too. Can I revise a poll? It looks like it's a tie for Arthur and Nacha. How do we deal with the tie? All right, how about this? They're both awesome. They're honestly both awesome. Stream favorite of the day. You got, he's gonna get stream favorite of the day. And then also Nacha's gonna get stream favorite of the day. But I'm also giving Nacha, my streamer favorite of the day. The Among Us guy is just so fun to play around with, bro. 